Jean Vandeveld had probably of the meltdowns in professional sports. Is this the most difficult to watch emotionally in terms of a meltdown? Uh, I'm going to say because there's a lot of sports. Yeah. There's a lot of you know. I think of in the sport of golf, the only thing close to this is what Greg Norman did at yeah. Augusta. Yeah, uh, just because Greg Norman was a top golfer, yeah. and you were hoping and praying that one day he would get that green jacket. But that was over a series of holes yes. where I think this one's yes. worse because no, it's 18. No, that's true. Yeah. Because it, it's basically, and for anybody that missed this, which you shouldn't have, it was his championship to lose. He he needed a double bogey to win. Yeah. That's a six. Six wins. That's that's like an average golfer like us. Hey, okay, I'll take a six. That's yeah. not a bad score. You, no, you, you hope you get a five. But, I mean, six is very attainable. It's it's the Ham and Egger score, that's, for sure. That's what he needed yeah. for an open championship. He did not listen. Courtesy of our friends at ESPN, they go back and not only show you the clips of what he did and the announcer making the call, but they go to the current announcer, and he looks back on it in you know, one of those English types. It simply is something that I don't believe anyone will ever forget. Jean Valdevel says, uh, well, at least I don't think they're going to be talking about it in 100 years. Yes, they will. In the ancient game, he was set to win the oldest prize. Approaching the 487-yard par 4 18th at Carnoustie, Jean Vandeveld, a 33-year-old journeyman with one win in a decade on the European tour, held a three-shot lead. Now, what to do? What to do? He's out with a driver. Now, now, I'm not sure this is right. To have the audacity, the stupidity to take a driver out of bounds on the left, Little stream, little berry burn running down the right fairway, 40 odd yards wide or whatever. Three shots ahead, the championship in the grasp of your hand. One hole to go, you know, three iron, three iron, seven iron, pitch up, and it's all over. Thank you very much. There's no way you hit driver in your hand. If you're his caddy, you break every club but the wedge and the putter. Vandeveld's caddy that week was Christoph Angiolini. The two had worked together for less than three months before arriving at Carnoustie. The strategy was to hit driver because the, the further you are, the closer you are of the green. And with a five iron, you can miss the fairway and you can be dead. Oh, you could just see the ball going through. Where the hell has that gone? And then suddenly it landed alongside the Barry Burn on the right. Oh, you lucky little rascal. The tee shot landed on a peninsula surrounded by the burn on the 17th hole. That left Vandeveld with a choice, be cautious or try to be heroic. The second shot options are you, you wedge it, you stay safe, or you try to clear everything. I told him uh, there is two options if you want to go for the green. For me, it's a two iron. There is a 190 meters. If you want to lay up, you can, you can hit a pitching wedge. And he said to me, why? I can hit two iron. I, I, I did that all the week and perfectly. Okay, take the two iron. You know, there's just no reason. You lay up and you still get the cleric jug. Nobody cares how you do it. Vandeville's second shot would be as unlikely and unlucky as any in the game's history. Taking a couple of bounces around the burn. Is this real, Mike? Are no. we actually seeing this? The ball hit the top of a grandstand railing, bounced off the stone wall guarding the burn, and came to rest in knee-high rough. If the ball stayed in the in the grandstand, there is a free drop, so there is no, no consequence. If it lands in anywhere else other than hitting that post, uh, you know, he, the ball drops straight down, he can chip it on the green, and, uh, you know, he's your open champion. Vandeveld stood in the high grass over his ball, assessing his line. He wins with a six. His third shot's coming up. You can see from Vandeveld's face as he looks down that he's got an issue, that that lies really bad. Look at here. It went in the burn. The sound of that club hitting the rough, the 
the ball goes up and it it's almost like it stays in the air long enough to rub it in. It's like if the ball was a person, it would have stopped and waved at Vanderbilt go, <laughs> as it goes in. This is so, 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 so sad. The worst. So unnecessary. Then the sideshow began. He's surely not going to go and climb down in there and try to whack it out of there. No, no, that would be, that would be, that would be totally ridiculous. No, what are you doing? Oh. No, no. What on earth are you doing? It wasn't underwater, and it was quite a long way back from the, the lip of the burn itself. And I thought if he actually got in there quick, he could have actually played it out. No, Jean, please. Would somebody kindly go and stop him? Give him a large brandy and mop him down. Then when he started taking his shoes and socks off and going into the water, I thought, well, this is ridiculous. He asked me this question. Chris, what, what do you think about this shot? Do you think it's possible? And, uh, and I can't answer another thing to, uh, I don't know. I don't know this shot. I never tried this shot. This really is beyond the <laughs> joke now. He's, he's, he's gone. I never tried this shot. This is quite... I've never seen anything like it before, and to attempt to hit the ball out of there is pure madness. Then he stands with his hands on his hips in true sort of Gallic style, like, uh, you know, Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> and I honestly did not know what to say, which isn't like me at all. But what do you say when you see somebody destroying in front of your very eyes? He's destroying the chance of a lifetime. You hate to be harsh on somebody, but this is one of the most stupid things I've ever seen in my life, I have to be honest. With photographers swarming, Vandeveld plucked the ball from the water. Thank goodness good sense prevails. He would take a penalty and drop in the rough behind the water for his fourth stroke. Two strokes left to win the open. From the deep rough, Vandeveld hit wedge for his fifth shot. Well, he's just compounding an error after error mentally. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five in a bunker. So we need, uh, we need a. Uh, uh, we need an up and down for, for the playoff. If this goes in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pack it in. I'm going to retire. <laughs> Vandeveld's bunker shot would settle six feet from the cup. 23 minutes after stepping onto the 18th tee, he needed to make this putt to join a playoff. You root against no one. You root for no one. But you've got to hope that this goes in. Fixture every day, triple. He went into the clubhouse or the hotel. I don't know whether he had psychiatric treatment, whether a doctor administered, whether he had a large brandy, whether he had a shower, changed his underwear. I don't know what he did. But then they emerged and they went into this playoff. The playoff would prove more footnote than finale. Paul Laurie defeated Vandevelt and Justin Leonard to claim the Claret Jug. But it was the man who lost the prize who would become infamous, and the way he lost it, indelible. You have to remember, putting in perspective, you know, it's a game. It's a game, right? It's not, you know, it's not like uh, life and death or, or whatever, you know. It's, it's your name down on the trophy. His response was, well, it was just a game of golf. I mean, it wasn't just a game of golf. It was the Open Championship, and it was a championship that he should have won and should be on the record book forever, but he's not. When you sit and you think about it, what could have been, what might have been, um, it's very difficult to get over that. But, uh, and I don't know, I think the scars are still there. If you scratch away at the surface, the scars are still, they must be there. He had what will go down, certainly within its sport, and maybe within all sports, as one of the greatest blunders of all time. That's kind of a sad way to be remembered. <laughs>